international security analyst as well. Of course, here we are again. A suspect is now in custody after the explosions over the weekend in New York and New Jersey. Ahmad Khan Rahami taken into custody Monday following a shootout with police in Linden, New Jersey. Good morning, Kevin. Um, here we go again. Yep. Pretty right. much the same thing repeated. And, and you know, you kind of wonder, are, are we somehow becoming desensitized to this? Because it would be a bad thing if we are. Well, I, I don't know that we de- we're desensitized to it, but kind, kind of get a perspective on this. And, and this is my cold-blooded analyst side here. I feel bad for everybody that was injured, yeah. anybody that's ever been injured or killed in one of these attacks. But from my perspective, there are a whole lot more people killed in car crashes on the same day. Right. And we're covering all that. It's the issue of terrorism is, you know, the, the picture that, that I think stands out the most is the young lady that was in Manhattan running down the sidewalk with a nail sticking out of her shoulder and mm. blood running down her arm. And that, that kind of encapsulates the whole issue. Yeah. She's out with her friends for a nice night at a restaurant, and she gets shrapnel blown into her body while she's minding her own business, not doing anything wrong. Yeah. That's the whole mentality of the terrorism. It, it, it catches you in a mentality of, I had nothing to do with anything. I was minding my own business, and these guys tried to kill me. And yeah. that's exactly why terrorism works, because of the nature, the psychology behind it. Uh, it's the new uh, it, it's the new way of uh, of inflicting pain on a nation uh, when you when you can't as you know ISIS can't step up as their own nation to be able to to uh, wage war against this country so they do it by creating uh, by creating fear and it's uh, just terrible now uh, I don't know that we know a lot uh, it seems like this is homegrown but he did take some trips over there um, and was in Afghanistan right yeah and that that kind of is something I've brought up with a few of our other uh, associates, is that how come all these guys that are living in their parents' place or in a cracker box apartment are coming up with the cash to go internationally for two to three weeks or a month? Yeah. Where are they getting the money from? I mean, I know most Americans that work in uh, regular routine worker jobs that would love to have enough money to take a vacation out of the country, not saying they want to go to where these guys go. Yeah. But... But the fact is, the average person can't fly overseas and take four weeks off of work. Yeah. How is it that these guys pulled this off? Second point, how is it that we're not paying attention to people that came from a combat zone, were put in the U.S., and then returned to a combat zone? Now, I get it. they got relatives and stuff, but still, yeah, what's yeah. up with going back when you try to escape it in the first place? And we're saying that he, uh, we're, we're being told that they interviewed him and found uh, found nothing. Uh, just the fact that, you know, the fact that he was going into that area alone, it would seem that we could put two and two together here. Well, I think if we look at some of the political correctness that has its way into law enforcement yeah. and to the, uh, the uh, security world, you're going to see a whole lot of things that aren't being done correctly. Let's just say that if you and I did the interview, we might have come out with a different amount of information than whoever interviewed him when he came back from Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that the case with Mateen, too, in Florida, that yeah. he had gone overseas and he was screen- flagged as a you know person yeah. of interest? But He went overseas. The guys in San Bernardino went to Saudi Arabia. All these guys have returned back to the hotbed yeah. and then come back to the States. Now, at the same time, I think we have to be cautious not to go too far. And the other way, uh, Donald Trump Jr.'s comment that, uh, you know, you have a bowl of Skittles and three of them inside are poisonous. You're going to eat the whole bowl. I'm not sure if it's responsible for us to uh, make that analogy with a race, a religion or a people. Do you, do you agree with that? Well, I, I, people are trying to simplify the whole concept. This is. This is, it's way more complex than that. Yeah. Um, you know, most, Ameri- most Americans don't get this, but the U.S. was founded on the principle that no aristocrat, no religious leader, no government force can tell me how to live my life. Right. Okay? But if you get into true fundamentalism in the Islamic world, your social life, your political life, your religious life, your government life are all one. You know, the government tells you what you can wear, because the government is your religious leaders, and you work in a justice system that is based on the religious system. So the whole concept that you're going to take someone who's really, really into the hardcore fundamental Islamic lifestyle and have them assimilate into the U.S., where we say you can't do anything that you believe in, is pretty crazy. Uh, And and even even so that they have, uh, if you've become, if you've gone so far as to become radicalized, 
the the very freedom that a man or especially a woman has here in the United States is offensive. Uh, that is offensive to you. So how do you live in that society? Well, the, the hits in Paris when they took out the soccer stadium, they don't believe in false idols. And if you worship your football players and put wow. their pictures on buses and billboards, that's a false idol. Um, they Everything you're talking about is exactly on target. You can't expect them yep. to stuff assimilate because it yep. is an affront. Kevin Malott, uh, security expert as always. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you.